10 times that Pawn Stars scams customers. The world of business is a very ruthless world with a strong dog eat dog policy that businessmen so adhere to that if you are caught slacking even the slightest bit, you would surely be taken advantage of. Talk more of a pawn shop where there are no fixed prices and only your business intuition and a great set of haggling skills would get you a good deal. Today, we bring you the top 10 times the pawn stars have scammed an unexpected customer and have gotten away with paying far less than the value of an object. As unpalatable as this might sound, business is business. So, sorry, not sorry. Before we move on, however, let us briefly meet the Pawn Stars. For those of you living in caves and under rocks, Pawn Stars is a TV series based on the world famous gold and silver pawn shop in Las Vegas, Nevada. Run by Richard Harrison, constantly referred to as Old Man, and his son Rick Harrison. Rick's son Corey Harrison, also known as Big Hoss, and Corey's childhood friend Austin Russell, fondly called Chumley. All done? Let's go. 10 times that Pawn Stars scammed customers. Do you hear that? Batman, we need an expert. Oh. Are you available? <laughs> 10. A Stan Lee fan. More than half of the world population are fans of the American comic book writer, publisher, editor, and producer who was the creative director for Marvel Comics for over 20 years. He created numerous superheroes, but one of his oldest and best selling is Spider Man, a character he created in 1962. Anybody would kill to get their hands on the first comic strips ever drawn and signed by Stan Lee. Aside bragging rights, those things cost a fortune. So, you can imagine Chum Lee's excitement when a customer waltzed in with one of the first comic strips drawn and signed by Stan Lee himself. But business first. So he had an expert check it out. The expert turns out to be the great Stan Lee himself. Now, double excitement, yes. The customer eventually settled for $5,000, but the actual value of this strip was a little over $10,000. The customer probably didn't mind since he got to meet Stanley in person. All right, I have this comic strip oh, here. Wow. Oh, this brings back memories. Nine, a Hotchkiss gun. The Hotchkiss 1890 two pound cannon was one of the deadliest arms of the late 19th century with a range of little under 2,000 yards, with a lot of accuracy too. It was really a gem, and it proved its worth during the Second World War. You have no idea how loud the buzz of excitement was at the pawn shop when a customer showed up with one of these pieces, and it was in perfect condition. In fact, it could still fire cannons after over 100 years in existence. It was considered authentic by two experts who valued it at over $40,000. The customer, however, got $30,000 for his piece. Not exactly a bad deal if you ask me. Where did you get this? I picked it up in a shop when I was traveling on the road a couple years back. Thought it looked awesome. Hey, Saiko TV Watch. Many of you might not know the English Arthur, journalist, and naval intelligence officer, Ian Fleming. But I'm sure everybody is familiar with his work. The James Bond series, which was initially a set of novels and short stories. James Bond is known for his high-end tech gadgets which includes supercars with cutting edge AI, bulletproof suits, but out of all of these was the most impressive. In the movie Octopussy, James Bond was seen sporting a Saiko TV watch. It is a vintage quartz watch and was recognized by in the early 1980s. So the value of this thing is astronomical. Chum Lee showed his amazing negotiating skills when he got a customer to sell his practically new Saiko watch for a meager $175. This watch was in perfect working order and its TV function was spot on. This was one of the biggest scams as the watch is valued over $1,300 and for the same one James Bond wore, it is valued at a lot more than that. I'll take the 175 bucks that I got today and uh, go have some fun with it. My folks can't take that one away from me. I'm old enough now. Seven. Dennis Rodman jerseys. Dennis Rodman is one of the few names in the Basketball Hall of Fame and enjoyed a very long successful NBA career, 
playing for 11 teams in the NBA, and winning five NBA championships. He was a seven-time NBA rebounding champion and was named the NBA Defensive Player of the Year two years in a row. This guy was on fire. Now you understand why getting his jersey was a big deal. When a strange woman entered the pawn shop with a bag full of Dennis game-worn jerseys, Chum Lee was suspicious about how she got them at first. It was later confirmed that she is his ex-wife and needed the money to pay for her daughter's tuition. She demanded $6,500, which is even lower than the jersey's original worth. Since they had sentimental value and even Dennis's signature, she just wasn't ready to go through the hassle of finding a buyer online. They, however, settled for $4,500 after Chum Lee pointed out that it would cost a lot to frame these jerseys. How did you get these? I was once married to Dennis. Whoa. Six, a book on alchemy. Wait, who would want a book on alchemy? Isn't that some kind of outdated practice? A book on alchemy should not hold so much value, don't you think? At least that's what I thought, until it was confirmed that the book belonged to Sir Isaac Newton, the renowned scientist known for his exceptional work in the fields of physics, like gravity and motion, and proposed several laws on these topics. That's not all he was known for anyway. He was known to drink mercury and dabble in alchemy and the dark arts. Old man didn't waste any time and immediately jumped on it like a hungry dinosaur and got the book at $7,000, although experts value the book at $20,000. I feel really bad for this customer, but business is business, right? Before we go on, now would be a good time to like this video and subscribe to our channel for very amazing content. Done? <laughs> Let's go. Rick for $35,000 because he has the potential to be a repeat customer and hopefully we can build up a good working relationship. Five, signed Japanese katana. Anime lovers will be very familiar with this Japanese sword that is mostly used to chop off the heads of monsters in movies and animated series. Here's a fun fact. The katana is made specifically for the Japanese samurai and it is proportionally to the height of its owner. It was very common from the 1300s to the 1500s, but there are only a few authentic pieces left in the world. When a lawyer who got the sword from a client of his showed up with an authentic piece, Corey jumped on it immediately. Well, not literally. He could tell that the customer didn't know the true value of this sword and got him to sell for $800, when in reality, this sword is worth $6,000. And when it is fully restored for a steep $3,000 fee, it's worth shoots up $1,500. Yeah, I'm disappointed. Because it looks real, it fooled me, and I was really looking forward to this. But I learned a lot. Four, gold coins. This is the one deal that almost got the Pawn Stars in trouble. When a woman showed up with a large assortment of gold coins, all the Pawn Stars could hear was the chime of the cash register because gold coins are extremely valuable and buyers are not scarce. But here's the twist. The woman wasn't telling the full story. She stole the gold coins from her uncle and definitely didn't know the value of them as she sold them for $12,000. Her uncle tried getting the collection back because he had some very rare coins in the collection, including dome buffalo gold pieces. Unfortunately, they didn't have the coins as they had melted them and resold them at a much higher price. Welp, sorry, uncle. Shocked at how much the coin was worth. I had no idea. Considering I was only asking for $2,000 when I first got here, I feel very happy with that. Three, The Godfather script. The Godfather, no doubt, is one of the greatest movies to ever hit the screens. And it's still some fire, even today. So, when a woman walked in with the original Godfather script, tensions were repeat. Although the script itself isn't worth much, it came with a picture of the Godfather and several signatures, and one of them read Al. This is interesting because an actor in the movie was the famous Al Pacino. Rick got an expert who confirmed the script was authentic and offered the woman $500. Plot twist, the woman walked away with her possession and later auctioned it for $12,000. Yet another plot twist, the signature didn't belong to Al Pacino. It belonged to the producer of the movie, whose name was Al. <laughs> Whoops. $500 is the best you can do. You can't shoot any higher than that. I told you it's the best offer I can do. It really is. Two, the Gutenberg Bible. No, not the entire Bible, a single page. And it's worth $80,000. 
How is a single page worth $80,000? I'll show you. The Gutenberg Bible, also known as the 42-line Bible, was one of the earliest books that were mass-produced in the West. There are only 49 surviving copies, highly valued for their aesthetic qualities and historic importance, although no single copy has ever been sold complete. The owner wanted $50,000 for the page, but Rick got on the sell for $47,000. It's amazing. Uh, I'll meet you right up front. Let me get someone to keep an eye on this and I'll do some paperwork. One, Victorian era saw handed pistols. This scam should be added to the list of the biggest scams in history and studied as a course. And guess who pulled this off? The great Chumley. When a gun enthusiast showed up with a pair of nickel planted saw handed pistol from the Victorian era, Chumley was skeptical about it mainly because they weren't in great condition. The barrels were even rusty. He became interested when his expert confirmed that these pistols were a treasure and were made by renowned gun maker Alexander Henry. The seller wanted $8,000, but Chum Lee managed to get him to agree on $3,300 giveaway price. At an auction in 2016, these pistols were sold for, wait for it, $42,000. Now that is an amazing deal. Based upon what I learned from the expert and Chum's negotiating skills, I took a little bit of a hit, but I'm still okay. And that is all the time we have today. Do well to like this video and subscribe to our channel if you already haven't. You have any comments or opinions? Drop them in the comment box below and tell us which of the customers you feel the most pity for and why. Until next time, stay safe, people.